escape. My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest. Right, another name you might know me by. Star. My name is Oliver Queen. You'll be hearing from us. From the strategic homeland. And just call us shield. Beware my power. Green lantern's light. And here we go. Excelsior! Ooh, that was something new. That was new. <laughs> I like the end there. I like that, too. Yeah, I wanted to do something like that. Big Wrench here for Geek Show. <laughs> BJ across the table from Hello. me. Uh, episode 18. Lots of stuff going on. There is. Primarily uh, DC. Yes. Uh, Very DC-centric show. We're showing the DC fans some love. We don't hate everything DC. No, just, um, just, just some stuff. Just some stuff, because... DC seems to want to shoot themselves in the foot yeah. when it comes to a lot of things. But, I mean, they they do do some things right. Yeah, I think their, their TV universe is... Um, they've, they've actually got a handle, for the most part, on the TV universe. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Um, I thought this season of Arrow was kind of a little bit weak at points, um, yeah. but I, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll cover Arrow and Flash, as well as the uh, trailers for Supergirl and uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, but first... BJ wanted to talk a little bit about Gotham, right? Because I'm not—I don't watch Gotham. I—I I, I got kind of tired of it after episode six or seven. Yeah. Um, and it just—I just never could really connect with I it. I think you watched it until the mid-season finale, and then we're just like, I'm not coming just, back. Just about, yeah. Well, um, I mean, up until that point, it was really—I mean, it was—it was an ep- it was an episode by episode show instead right. of an episodic show, which yeah. is more my cup of tea when you're talking about this genre, right? So it was, uh, it, you know, overall, Gotham had had some high points. I thought that they did some things really well. Robin Lord Taylor as the Penguin was great. I, I like him. He's right. awesome. I, I mean, the episodes I saw, the mm-hmm. Penguin was fantastic. Uh, if you had come into it, and I'm sure you'll, you'll do it on Netflix or something at some point. Right. But when you, once you see him and he continues to develop into the Penguin, which it's almost like they took... They took the, because the penguin's always kind of a little. Uh, he's not like a menacing villain to me. Right. I, I mean, the traditional penguin is like, yeah, you know, Burgess, monocle. The Burgess Meredith thing. Yeah, exactly. Paul Williams on the animated right. series. But I mean, exactly. If you're if you're thinking about it in that way too, I mean, then all the villains in Batman are a little bit silly. Yeah. But the way that they did it was, you know, they're you know he's an up and coming crime boss. Yeah. Which I think is perfect for that kind of role, you know, and he's not this weird, you know, misshapen person like we saw right. um in Batman Returns with Danny DeVito and right. stuff. And I actually like the the fact that he's look he looks normal. Yeah. You know, I like that cuz that make that can make him even more menacing. Exactly. Well, yeah, and the way that they that they just continue to develop that character into this kind of like psychotic out for himself, he'll do anything to right. you know, get to the top. I thought that that was really really good and it was really well done. So that guy's performance, Robin Lord Taylor, hats off to you. You were solid the entire season. You were probably the well only done, thing sir. solid. Well done. Right. I'll insert some more applause here in post. <laughs> he deserves it. But, I mean, when you're talking about Gotham, he was probably the only thing that I liked 100% throughout the entire season. Yeah. And I think that that started right from episode one when we got to see him in the introduction and everything. But, um, I mean, some of the stuff that happened throughout it, you know, they kind of introduced a little bit of, like, they they went into the Red Hood thing, um, right. but it wasn't like Red Hood that you know you're used to in the comic books. The Red Hood is more just like a persona that someone takes on. Right. It gives them this, you know, it makes them feel empowered or whatever. So it was a little bit different, but it, it was pretty well done the way that they did that. Um, I liked um, uh, Marina Baccarin, uh, her edition of the, um, uh, I believe that she was the medical examiner, or you know she was working in the uh, she was working in Arkham Asylum mm-hmm. at the time. And, uh, you know, her character, you know, ends up, you know, being romantically involved with Jim Gordon. And, and that was pretty good. Um, speaking of Jim Gordon, you know, overall, I thought that they kind of they all of a sudden they started to really develop the character. Well, yeah. and then I think they backtracked on it a little bit. But I mean, we'll get going with that. He's still young Jim Gordon. He'll eventually, you know, turn into the Jim Gordon that we all love right. from the comic books and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, Donald Lowe, I thought was was OK um, as uh, as Bullock. Um, it kind it kind of did, you know, I remember when we talked about it earlier on and you said that you kind of wanted Gotham to be that gritty crime drama. Yeah. Um, I thought that they started to do that 
they started to get away from like the hokiness of like that balloon man yes. stuff from the beginning God, of the season. That right there killed it for that, me. That really turned me off to it. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't know if I can watch this. Because I think I watched Balloon Man, and that was the episode where my wife was like, you can watch this by yourself. Because yeah. that was stupid. And <laughs> Vera, I said, you got it. <laughs> Vera, peace out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And I don't blame her for that, because it was not a show that I watched. I just got around to watching the finale. And when I say I got around to watching the finale, I had to watch like three episodes to catch up on that and everything. So it definitely wasn't like, you know, something that I was jumping to the TV right. to watch, you know, like because yeah. we do that. I mean, we we live tweet Flash and Shield and I'll throw some tweets out there for Arrow because I'll watch that as it happens. But yeah, no, not not Gotham. No, I'm sorry. I just I couldn't yeah. do it. But the finale wasn't wasn't horrible. Um, You know, throughout the entire season, you kind of saw Ed Nigma. Yeah. Um, you know evolving into the Riddler character and right. they, they, you know, they kind of made him that psychotic Riddler character. I think everything that they're doing with the Batman villains is kind of part the villain that we're used to seeing and right. part inspired by psychotic Joker. That's what I think. But okay. all, all villains are inherently a little psychotic. Right. And in the finale, yeah. he kind of, he, he loses it. You know, his mental, he, he mentally breaks down right. and turns into this crazy character so if they start to explore that side in season two where they left it <laughs> ed nigma is going to be an awesome character okay. similar to robin lord taylor's penguin Ooh. um i mean just the, the way that he broke down and everything it, it, it was fantastic i'm still not sold on the young bruce wayne stuff i i, I don't care about that side of it yeah. i don't care about young selena kyle um and i i just man i don't care about fish mooney uh, you know her character i i I could, you know, I, I don't need her. And, you know, a, a spoiler for you and yeah. spoiler for um, anyone else. I mean, they already, they killed off Sal Maroney in the finale. You know, Fish Mooney shoots him right in the head. And I'm like, um, so Sal Maroney no longer exists in the Gotham universe? Because I'm pretty sure Sal Maroney existed when young Batman was taking shape. So, so is Sal going to be, is it going to be young Sal Jr.? What's no, going on? I don't on? think, I mean, they haven't mentioned anything. It just looks like he's gone. So, okay. I mean, that is what it is. I give, I give the show because yes, three quarters of the time I did not like what they were doing with it. But the one quarter of the time that I did like it, mm. I really liked it. So I, I, I'm giving it about a B minus, and that's grading on a curve, I bet. Yeah, because I was really struggling. I curve. wanted to give it a C. Like a I was like, curve. it's got to get a C. I don't know. For some reason, idiots love it. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. You know what I mean? I no, just... I, I I've seen like on like comic book like groups and message boards and things like that. People like Gotham. I don't know why. A lot of it is people saying that they read Batman Year One, and they right. really enjoyed that comic. I mean, I. Can see a little bit of it from that, but I mean, no, I just, uh, I'm not really sold on Gotham. You know, maybe season two will be better. We'll, yeah. we'll have to see. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I'll, I'll give it another shot. I will, you know, I'll take Catch a look up at on it. it over the summer. When yeah. There's nothing some, else on. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I need something to do. Right. You know, when, you know, cause I'm going to be on leave for when the baby comes. Mm -hmm. So I'll have plenty of free time. I've already. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I, hey, remember this, you know. I, this ain't my first rodeo. That's it's true. Kim's first rodeo, but okay, this this okay. is this isn't mine. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, uh, for the most part, but yeah, I mean, when I do have free time, yeah. it's definitely going to be Daredevil. I'm going to rewatch Daredevil again. Um, yeah, I'll I'll pick up on Gotham. Um, see if I can stick with it this time. I'll yeah. I'll give it another shot. I gave Arrow another shot. Right. I got into it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's just something that's got to kind of grow. Yeah, we on both me. relate to the part relate to the Arrow party. Yeah. But I mean, they, I I think. Well, I mean, my theory is, you know, the first season of a show, everything is getting established. It's never really good. I'll watch it most mm -hmm. in most cases, you know, and I'll kind of grip my teeth, like, yeah, this isn't really all that great. Well, because you can see the potential. Yeah, you can see the potential and all that. You can see where they want to go, but it's kind of like, you know, I want to get there. I want to get there. Yeah, just get, just stop with the setup and just take just me there. Just go. You know? you know, that's you know what that's something that a lot of Walking Dead fans can relate to, right? Because the uh, last few seasons of that was a lot of crazy setup, you right. know, leading to something big, but it was really slow moving, and people, you know, they were voicing their opinions about it. It's slow, it's slow. Pick it up, pick it up. So this most recent season, they picked up the pace a lot. They didn't drag on right. a lot of things, and people were like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, slow down!" And it's like <laughs> you need to make up your mind. You're like either you want them to go fast or you want them to go slow. You know, you got to find that happy medium, right? Right. You know, so. and I don't, I don't envy the writers for having to try to 
figure that either. out. No way. You know, I mean, obviously they want to they want to help. You know, they want to give the fans what they want. Mm-hmm. They want to tell the story that they have, but they want to do it in a way that everybody's going to enjoy it. Yeah. So I mean, but just remember, guys, if any of you guys listen to this show, I hope <laughs> that um, you know you can't please everybody. You should keep that in mind. You can't. No, there's can't. Ne- there's always going to be because I've seen plenty of negative comments about Age of Ultron right. and everything like that. And you and I came right out and said, you know, we we didn't love it the way that we thought right. we were going to love exactly. it. Exactly. So I mean, yeah, there there is uh, there is some some like happy medium that you need to find where everybody is happy. Um, personally. I think the Flash has done that pretty well. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they've done that as a as a TV show very well. Right. Um. But on that note, why don't we talk about um Arrow wrapped yeah. up last week? Yep. So that's done for the season now. Right. The CW kind of screwed up the timeline on that because the Flash finale is on Tuesday night. So if you're listening to this um Tuesday when we release it tonight. Um, tonight the, is the yeah yeah tonight is the Flash uh, finale on, t- on the release night of this show. Yeah. Right, so there you go. But um, so what did what did you think of the Arrow finale? I thought that it was it pretty was, predictable. It was okay, but mm-hmm. I think they kind of left it as you know. I I don't know. I mean, yeah. just you know, Felicity and Ollie just what driving off in the sunset. I know, what like the, he's done. What is that? You know, and and Stephen Amell. I was reading about this. Um, Stephen Amell has 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 been saying that, yep, I'm not wearing the, the arrow costume anymore. It's done. I'm like and and people have been saying, Yeah, he's been he's he's like pulled fast ones like that before and said that kind of stuff and totally diff you know, and they've totally done it. So if he's not the arrow See, you know, here's then, I think you can interpret this differently. It's the last time he's worn the arrow costume. But what about another costume? That's true. Right? So there it's the that. last time that he's put on that Arrow costume where everybody thinks that he's like a killer vigilante. Right. So, you know, with through the intros of the show, he always talks about how he had to become something different. He had to be something different. Right. So now I think we're finally going to see him evolve into, I guess, maybe the Green Arrow. Instead right. of just the Arrow, he will be the Green Arrow. You know what I mean? Okay. I could see that. I think it's a little trickery on his part. But. All right. Yeah. Well, that's and that's my point. Yeah. I think he's just he's pulling a fast one on us to you know kind of just ramp up uh, the anticipation for the next season. Slow it down, Stephen. Who well, I talk about typecast by the way because he's also playing Casey Jones, known vigilante in the Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah, Turtles. Yeah. Talk universe. about pigeonhole. <laughs> Let's. Yeah. We here, need a vigilante fit, here. Get 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 Stephen Amell. He'd right. be good. We need a we need someone to play the Punisher with Stephen Amell. He's a vigilante. No, no Stephen Amell <laughs> for the Punisher. No. He would be terrible as the Punisher. Yes. He's great as Oliver Queen, but uh, I I could not see him playing someone yeah. that dark. We need Tom Jane. Thomas Jane. You, <laughs> That's what we need. I don't I mean he would be I think he'd be willing to come back and do it. Um he did that one internet short. I forget yep. what that was called. Like, uh Dirty Laundry. Dirty Laundry, which was uh which was really good. Yes. Um so he would come back. But anyway, back to Arrow. Yeah. Before we get off on a tangent. Yeah, let's not go too, too far <laughs> on the tangents today. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I that was that was my only real thing was just I mean, plenty of action. It was lots of fun. Yep. Um that little twist at the end mm-hmm. where Oliver hands the the little thing, the little trinket or whatever to to Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Um so he can become the new Ra's al Ghul. Right. That that right there, I did not really see that one coming. I didn't see that coming either. I thought maybe he would take over the league and like run it in a, I don't know, like kind of a, like a hands off kind of way, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I always thought the you know the whole League of Assassins and Ra's al Ghul was more of a Batman thing. He, uh, well, I mean, as far as I think main adversaries, I think yeah. Batman is is really far in there because right. of like you know the whole uh, you know relationship. Um, with um, oh, what's her what's her name, Miranda Tate and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I think that that's more Batman centric and everything. But I think that Roz is uh just throughout DC. Yeah, you know, I think he's 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 more of a, a an overall kind of like kind of like um, he's kind of like Vandal Savage. Yeah. you know what I mean, where he kind of like takes on everybody associated with the Justice League. Right. Or like a Doctor Doom in the Marvel universe. Like he's yeah. primarily Fantastic Four, but he does his battles with the Avengers too. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, that and that's yeah. So I mean, I'm, and and I I, I kind of like the way, um, that they left it with him because it looks like you know Malcolm can still be some real trouble for Arrow. Yeah. You know, for 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 the gang for Team Arrow. But I'm thinking 
they should really let that whole storyline kind of rest yeah. for maybe a half season or Absolutely. maybe even the whole season. Yeah. Um, maybe have John Barrowman come back for some cameos here and there, that kind of thing. Set up some stuff for like the next season or later on in the season. Mm-hmm. You know, you see him coming to Starling City because Leave well, him out for the first half of next yeah, season. I was on you know, I came to town on business for something. Or I'm going, you know, or I'm just, just to visit Thea. Or yeah. I'm like I'm stopping by because I'm on my way to say Coast City to do this or Central City to do this. By the way, you totally nailed that with the Thea thing. Because remember, we were yeah. talking about that when we thought that yeah. Roy would die. He didn't end up dying. He He's just, just left. He left the show. Yeah. But um, you, you nailed that when you were like, well, maybe they're setting it up so that Thea can become um, Speedy, which yeah. was her nickname. Yeah. As you know, as stupid as that is. But, you know, so now she is, you know, she, Speedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they went from having, you know, badass Arsenal to having Speedy. So. Right. Well, I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, and I, I mean, I, it was kind of telegraphed as soon as they said her nickname was Speedy. I'm like, oh, OK. I mean, that was all the way back in like season one. See, but I didn't think that they would do anything with it. I thought that that was just a weird like little like, uh, you know, like uh, something out of the cookie jar. For I, th- I think for them Eats. not to do that. Right. Would have been kind of a slap in the face of the Green Arrow. Fans. Right. Well, and I mean, they got to You know, they, they obviously take liberties and Greg Berlanti has done like a really, yeah. really awesome job with these shows. He's, so. he's, he's stuck pretty faithfully to the whole, you know, to the to the to the whole mythos of of Oliver Queen and the Green Arrow and that. Right. I mean, he's taken, he's taken some liberties, of course. Mm-hmm. It's television. It's something new. It's different. Yeah. I mean, I've been okay with pretty much everything that he's done. Yeah. And a lot of that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually happy that that, that uh, Thea is now, you know, the sidekick. I, I mean, I, like I said, I saw it. I yeah. saw it coming. So yeah. it was just, you know, nice to finally get that, you know, that here, here's your here's your cake. You so, can now eat it. So, I mean, as far as, like, Team Arrow goes at the end of the episode, you know, you had mentioned, you know, Oliver and Felicity are kind of drive off into the sunset. And right. He says he's done. He's happy. He, you know, the he'll be city back. has heroes to look over it at this oh, point. Oh, he'll be back. So, on Team Arrow at this point, you have Thea as Speedy, Red Arrow, whatever right. she's going to go with. Um, I'm pretty sure Diggle's still around. You know, was that whole thing at the end of the episode where, you know, you really need to consider wearing a mask if you want to, well, you know there's, what I mean? There's been some reports and rumors online that yeah. Diggle is going to get a costume. He's going to get a mask. Right. What he, who he's going to be, we don't know. He I'm, might get a ring. You, I was thinking that. I'm like, well, how would they work that? I mean, John Stewart, John Diggle... How do they work that? Now he's Argus co- changes his name to po- well, protect he, him? Well, he's talked about before um, that those talks about him becoming Green Lantern have been have been talked about. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and there was that Easter egg, I think it was either an Arrow or the Flash, and they're talking about getting to Ferris Air. And I think it was yeah. I think it was Arrow when they were flying to Nanda Parbat or something yeah. like that. When they said, why is this place shut down? And they said, oh, yeah, that's the place where one of the test pilots disappeared. And I was like, okay, that's definitely how jordan yeah um you know what i mean so that i like that easter egg to set that up so right. who says that argus doesn't like maybe maybe how jordan doesn't quite exist but maybe you know they have um uh, they they have the the ring or something like right. that my my thinking well no my thinking is is that um yes hal disappeared yeah he is the green lantern um, but maybe he's on Oa or something like that. He's doing something else. Yeah. He's away from from the Earth. Uh, he'll come back. They set him up as, you know, as Green Arrow temporarily, not Green Arrow, a uh, Green Lantern temporarily. Yeah. But then, you know, he becomes a member of the Green Lantern Honor Guard mm-hmm. and then has to leave Earth and, hey, we need a new Green Lantern for Earth. Guess who? You know, you know. Well, I mean, John, I mean, they could they could do the whole thing where they change John's name to right. protect him for his identity. You know, that kind of thing. Argus mm-hmm. does it or John's wife does it to help, you know, to help him out. God, that would be, you know, that fits in so well. You that need to would. think you need to think about changing who you are. Is right. what he says to him, you need to wear a mask. So, yeah, he takes John Diggle off the map and he becomes John Stewart. That would be a really cool. That thing. would be kind of cool. Now, the, the only other thing would be, though, is I would hope that they would somehow figure out a way to sneak in Guy Gardner. Just because, <laughs> I, 
just because Guy Gardner is such a big asshole. Yeah. And I, I just I just like his style. And the fact that Batman punched him in the comics, mm-hmm. you know, square on the nose because Guy was just being a wise ass. I think that, you know, if they are going to squeeze somebody in, I mean, Hal Jordan is, I mean, well, they've done it with Barry Allen on the show and Oliver Queen. Those are the originals. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe you do get the mention of Hal Jordan, but Guy Gardner would be somebody that would be cool and right. worth mentioning. Maybe, you know, maybe Hal Devs, you know, Maybe Hal technically is the Green Lantern of Sector Two. Uh, was it? Oh, wow. Two two one eight six or whatever. Remember. I can't remember. But you know, he's just so busy with whatever the the you know the 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 core has for him. Yeah. He can't come back. So it's like we need another Green Arrow on Earth. Yeah. In the Green Arrow. Why do I keep saying Green Arrow? Because we're talking about Arrow. That's, that's right. Makes yeah, sense. We need another Green Lantern on Earth. <laughs> so okay, John Diggle, your name is now John Stewart. You know, will the you know the ring accepts basically right John Diggle because he is worthy, right? And then boom, okay, we need to change your name. You're now John Stewart. You're now the Green Lantern mm-hmm. of Sector Two One Eight Six or whatever. I I I, I don't know. whatever it is. Whatever it is. I I'm, I'm bad with numbers, but you are now the Green Lantern. Yeah. So I think that would be good, and that would set it up for even you know, maybe. I I think my thinking is. My my overall end game, I think that they're gonna have is by the time all these series they're ready to end them, they're gonna end it with the formation of the Justice League. Yeah, or some form of the Justice League, right? Because you won't have you probably. I mean, as much as you want to see it, you you won't have Batman or Superman. Well, maybe maybe a little, but well, here's the. I mean, when we you won't have Batman or Superman from the from the DC cinematic right, world anyway. Right. I mean that that's that's pretty much going. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what's what's going to happen. But I think we'll we'll see something along those lines. Right. Maybe they'll be. I, I don't know. I I don't know. I, I'll have to think about it. But yeah. I mean, jumping into you know when when we talk about the Supergirl trailer, I'll mm. give my ideas on that. Okay. You know, with 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 Superman and all that kind of thing. But makes sense. Um. But yeah. So overall, I think yeah. I think I think Diggle will you know somehow they'll they'll make him. Uh, they'll, they're going to make him a hero, whether it's Green Lantern or not. Right. We don't know. Or eventually, maybe they set it up so that he becomes that person or right. something. Like, I think it would be really cool if maybe he doesn't become Green Lantern right away. Yeah, he has to go through. You know, he basically goes through. He's paying his dues somehow. Something like that. But like, it's like you said, they needed to erase him. They needed to protect his identity and his family, yeah. so they they make him John Stewart. Right. So he's just John Stewart for a while, and right. he's out there doing his thing. And this would. And you know, I just thought about it. This would tie in awesomely because of the whole Green Arrow, Green Lantern team ups. Yeah, absolutely. That would all tie in. I mean, granted, it was Hal Jordan, yeah. but still, there's. I would have no problem if it was Stewart. No way, John Stewart is. I, I love John Stewart. John Green Stewart Lantern. is an awesome Green Lantern. So, yeah. I would say, yeah, that would work really well. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, so, hell yeah, maybe we will see some Green Lantern love. I don't think it's out of the question. I don't think it's out of the question either. So there you go. All right. Mark this day and time. <laughs> We're thinking John Diggle becomes John Stewart to become the Green Lantern. Eventually. Eventually. Right. Yes. All right. So, all right. So Arrow, that that's done. That wrapped up. I was a little disappointed, though, like, because in the beginning of it, they had Barry come in, and I thought he'd be more involved. Yeah, Barry um, should. they should have had Barry more involved. But, you know, he was just there for the... He was just there for the very beginning. So right. I, I I liked his involvement. I liked the way that he saved everyone. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I wish that I wish that he had been a little bit more involved in that finale. But he's getting ready for his own finale. Yeah. Um, which is, like we said, which is on tonight, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, once when the day we released it. Um, the setup for what they did um, so far with the reverse flash and yeah. everything has been phenomenal. And I think right yeah. now is where, you know, what we're going to see is where it all kind of comes full circle. Yeah. The time travel, everything that is going to be going on, yeah. um, you know, happens for a reason. Now, something happens with this time travel, which is getting into the Legends of Tomorrow thing, where something disrupts somewhere. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, something happens. Because, I mean, you can't change. If you change the past, you change the future. Correct. So, I don't think... I think what you're going to find out in this finale, and this is just what I'm thinking, is that Barry can't save his mom. If Barry saves his mom, Barry does not become the hero he needs to be. Correct. So I think that's going to be a tough thing for him to wrestle with, but I think at the end of the day, he gets his dad out of jail at least. Right. Yes. So. I think that's, yeah, that's 
that's got to happen. We'll, mm-hmm. And maybe we'll see. I mean, I don't think we'll see John Wesley Ship as a regular character on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'll be coming back right. on a regular, you know, on a semi regular basis. Yep. You know, maybe he decides I got it. You know, your mother's gone. Uh, you know, all this stuff happened to me. Kind of messed me up. I got to find, you know, you're doing good, Barry. You're, you know, you're the flash. You're, you're, you're happy. Yeah. You're, you're, you're well adjusted for, you know, mm-hmm. superhero wise. You're right. I'm going to move over here and try to find myself. And, right. Something like know, that. Yeah. And then you see, you see him come back to visit and everything. I got to get out of Central City. It's too many bad memories. And, right. You know. I mean, there's a lot of setup that they did in this episode. I thought it was really cool the way that they had. The way that they had um, Oliver as Arrow come in, yep, it was a little out of place since he was still, you know, under League influence, I guess. But... Yeah, and he, well, I mean, it was at his League right. armor on exactly. So, um, I thought that was cool, and they had Firestorm come in and yep. everything, and they were like kind of gonna, they were just gonna take him out and and whatnot. So uh, it's gonna it's gonna come to a head in this finale, right? Um, I don't know if you saw this too. Um, Danielle Panabaker, who plays Caitlin Snow. Um, confirmed that at some point she does turn into Killer Cross. Yeah, I saw that. So um, maybe we see some sort of seed planted with that. Possibly. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm wondering how that... Change- oh, and here goes back to this. Change If you change the past, even if it's like a, a littlest oh, thing, yeah. you change the future. So she changes, he changes the past somehow to affect her where she is not the Caitlyn Snow that we know. Right. She's a more bitter, angry Caitlyn Snow yeah. who somehow becomes a metahuman and, and also becomes Killer Frost. Yeah. Something so. happens. Maybe something with the um something that goes on with the uh the accelerator. Yep, exactly. That's gotta be it. I mean something happens. There but, always has to be you can't it's the butterfly effect. Something always happens. Yeah. Butterfly flaps its wings in Madagascar, you right. get a tsunami in Hawaii. So can't escape it. So, yeah. he, you know, that something is going to happen when he goes back in time chasing uh, Aobard Thawne. I don't think this is certainly the last time we'll see Aobard Thawne as Reverse Flash. I don't, I, I don't so see either. them, you know, I, he's more than just a, a seasoned villain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like how they've, they've left it kind of open-ended with Deathstroke on Green Arrow. I, I think that they need to leave it open. Um, I think they need to leave things open. Right. With with reverse flash. They've left everything open as far as the rogues go. They're all out and about now. Right. Yeah. So um thanks to Captain Cold. Yeah. Wentworth Miller, you jerk. Bastard. Um, I love the way he's playing Captain Cold. Oh by yeah. The way. He's, he's very good. He's awesome at that. He's it, really I love it. The uh the bar scene when Barry comes in to talk to him and yeah. they start playing You're Cold as Ice and I was like, Ah, that's really funny. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Just, uh, just It reminds the, me of all those scenes in like the, the, the animated series where you see all the bad guys just hanging out in a bar drinking right. and all that, and then in walks Batman or somebody, and yep. everybody's like, uh, I think it's time to go get a hot dog down the street. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everybody runs. I mean, no, Batman's just a guy, you super villains. What are you scared of? Yeah, I know. Come on. Give me a, give me a break here. But that was kind of funny. But yeah, so that airs. That That's going to be on Tuesday. We'll, we'll see what happens with it, but I think that you've got a, a pretty good feel for where we think it's going to head. Yeah. I mean, my only... My only thing about the last episode of Flash, uh, last week's episode, was just, and, and this is a very, very small thing. So they've defeated, you know, they've, they've, they, got, they got Reverse Flash on the ground. Uh, there's Barry and Ollie and uh, uh, Ronnie yep. standing around. They're like, yay, high fives, we got it. You know, Woo-hoo, uh, thanks, go team. Thanks, guys, appreciate it. And then Barry's just standing there, and then it's like exit stage left. They just, like, walk out of the scene. I'm like, wh- why isn't, you know, are they going to get a beer together? What's going on? It's just, you know, why isn't Ronnie, you know, flaming up and then, ru- you know, flying yeah. and then, you know, Ollie can just fire an arrow. And- well, it was, you know, it was kind of like that whole thing where, um, remember when they first introduced Ray Palmer in the suit yeah. and he, and he blasts, uh, was it him? Yeah. He blasts, uh, Ray. <laughs> And or not Ray, Roy. He blasts Roy, and Roy just ends up on the ground, and he's just laying there. And they never resolved it. They just had like Arrow talk to him, and he was like, "I need you to be a hero," or something like that. And he's like, "Okay." And then Arrow just walks away. And I was like, "Well, what about what happened to Roy? He's yeah, laying there. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah." So I mean, they they do, they seem to do that That's, a lot. Yeah, that was that just that was you just know? something that kind of nagged me there a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's just, I keep seeing it in my head. It's like, 
yeah, let's just go. You know, they, there's a falafel guy down the road. Let's go get something. I know. I you know. know. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go get a funnel cake over there. Right. You know? Thanks for helping, guys. But I need him alive so I can travel back in time with him. Yeah. Eventually. What the, what the f? Come on. Whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see how that shapes yeah, up. Yeah, that's um, just something. I don't think it'll let us down though. Yeah, I, I, they they really haven't done anything major to let me down. So no. I think um, it'll be good. I'm 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 pretty confident. And if you're confident, if you have any, you know, if, give us your thoughts on what we've covered so far. Gotham. The Arrow finale, uh, you know, Flash up until now. Um, I mean, obviously, we're gonna we're gonna probably live tweet the Flash. Yep. Um, which will be the last show of the season, right? That we're gonna live tweet mm-hmm. um, on Tuesday night. But yeah, go to xjockalbanyny.com. You can also, uh, you know, write in the comments for this show, or you know, just email us bj at uh, xjockalbanyny.com or bigrich at xjockalbanyny.com. Let us know what you think of the show, as well as you know our theories or what you think should happen. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear your input as well. Now, uh, you know, speaking of the and staying with the Arrow and the Flash universe, yeah, um, on the CW itself in 2016. So I think this is going to be half season thing. Right, they're going to see how it goes. But Legends of Tomorrow, the trailer is out. You can watch the trailer at xtrackalbanyny.com. Uh, but in that trailer, you find out an awful lot of information. You find out that. It is Oliver and Barry who assemble this team of people together. And right. I think that they're obviously going to be led by uh, Brandon Routh's Ray Palmer. Um, but on that team, um, which you're super excited about, you have Hawk Girl. Yeah. Um, who I think that they, what did they say? You know, on this team, you've got, you know, a girl with some uh, personality, like, you know, her personality issues, thinks right. that she's from an ancient universe or something like that yeah, so there's the thanagarians yeah she thinks she's an ancient alien right exactly born and that kind of and thing. she has wings and everything yeah. so i mean hot girl is hot girl is so cool so i'm really excited to see how they go about um you know bringing her into yeah. the, everything i think you might see a little introduction to all of these characters on yeah on flash or arrow one of right. the two um you also katie lots is back she is back as Sarah Lance, and it's exactly like we said. They bring her to the Lazarus Pits. They bring yeah. her back, and she is now the White Canary, which to me, from comic book continuity, White Canary makes much more sense for her character than Black Canary because right. White Canary is just this like awesome like you know martial arts like yeah. person. So we'll see how that goes. But she is back. She is still playing Sarah Lance. She's just going to be playing the White Canary. Um, and then you have one half. A firestorm, the yeah. uh, Victor Garber's uh, character. Right. Um. So he will be there. I think he'll be more like a uh, kind of like Harrison Wells was in the beginning of the kind Flash. of the mentor kind right. of end of things. Exactly. You don't think we'll see Firestorm? I mean, we might, but I don't think that they're going that route because Robbie and Mel hasn't said anything about yeah being a part of the show, and there wasn't really much uh, focus on him in this trailer. And then what was it? There's a, there's someone else that's on the team too. So you've got. The Adam, you've got Katie Lotz, you've got Firestorm, you've got Hawk Girl. Is there somebody else in there? Oh, um, yeah, Rip Hunter. Rip Hunter. Yeah, Rip Hunter is in is in there too. Yeah, the time Arthur Darvel. Yeah. Right. So I mean, so but and the reason why he's there is because he's one of these people that makes sure that something isn't going wrong with time. Really cool thing is that the big villain they're going to be facing is Vandal Savage. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. I can't wait to see that. That is going to be cool. Because Vandal Savage is like this ancient, like, you know, he was like a caveman, right? And he, like, got all this knowledge, and now he's super smart, and he's, like, immortal and everything. And he basically just wants to, like, he wants to, like, take everything back to the Stone Ages and, like, things like that. So, um, if if really, some really cool episodes. I believe it's either, it's either Justice League, or I believe it's Justice League Unlimited uh with vandal savage episodes and exactly like what his game plan is and everything but exactly you know when it comes to big villains in the dc universe i think vandal savage is is right up there with uh you know rachel ghoul and and stuff like that you know not as big of a villain as uh you know i guess uh i guess like the joker and things like that but still pretty uh pretty a big thing so that's why i think that they ended up needing to assemble this legends of tomorrow team right you know so I don't know. I'm 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 pretty pumped. I thought that the trailer were cool, and we finally got to see Tiny Ray. Yeah, we got to see the the actual Adam because right. that was my big question. As soon as they introduced Ray Palmer in Arrow, it's like, okay, he's got this exo suit. He's, he's freaking Iron Man, you right? Know? Exactly. That's, that's all he is. He's not doing anything. Well, then they started getting into the nanotech and everything. Right. It was only a matter of time before he developed it the way he needed to. But um, right, I think that it's uh, I don't know. It just it, it looks like it's going to be really good. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. So we'll see how. Uh, We'll see. And the Atom flies. 
right. which is kind of cool. Yeah, because he I don't think he really I don't think he flew think, in the comics. I don't think so. But he didn't. I know. Have a, I know he didn't have the power of flight. He right. usually got a lift from somebody or something like that. But well, it should be. I mean, it should be really cool once we see this play out. But that's not coming till 2016. So right. I, I couldn't figure out if they meant like January 2016 for like the half season right. thing, or if we're talking like fall. Oh, also, oh, uh, uh, Heat Wave and Captain Cold are part yes, of the team too. Yes, that's it. Yes. Um, which made me, I thought that they were setting that up in the most recent episode of the flash until, you know, Captain Cold and Golden Glider ended up betraying them right. and everything. But, you know, maybe just maybe, because they said, you know, right in the trailer, he's like, I don't think I'm a hero. And he's like, no, you're not a hero. You're a legend in, in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. So something happens where Captain Cold becomes a reluctant good guy. Right. He's um, like kind of, almost like an anti-hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, he's on this team because at the end of the day, he doesn't want to die. So he's going to help, you know, preserve himself and, and in turn preserve the world. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Something happens when Barry goes back in time to disrupt something, uh, you know, and then gives way to Vandal Savage. Right. And everything. But I think it's, you know, the time travel aspect um, it has been really kooky and yeah. and everything. Um, yeah. So it should be interesting the way they handle it because there's gonna be I think there's gonna be a lot to do with time travel and Legends of Tomorrow. I kind of think I kind of think Arthur Darvel's whole character. Yeah. You know the fact that they cast him as the time traveler was kind of funny just because of. Oh, it is because of you know the whole Doctor Who connection and all that. Yep. So, you know that was that. I'm I'm happy with that and getting this. You know, anytime I get to see somebody who is on Doctor Who mm-hmm. on American television. It's I've I've always been happy with that kind of stuff. You know, you know that they've made it. Yes, <laughs> you know that like Karen Gillan. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, in Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. when I saw that she got cast, I was like, "Oh, this is so cool!" And right. then you know, and she was in that ABC show Selfie. It didn't last very no, long. No, it did not. It, I, I I watched a few episodes. It was okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was cute. It was obviously you know modern retelling of you know My Fair Lady. Yep. Um. But yeah, I mean, I I love it when that kind of stuff happens. Right. I'm, you know, so that's why I'm still kind of waiting for, uh, you know, I'm still kind of waiting for like Matt Smith. I mean, David Tennant, he's already been on right. American television with the whole Grace Point thing. Yep. Uh, which was a retelling of Broadchurch, uh, from the UK. And that so. And one of your other guys is going to be on AKA Jessica Jones. So. Yep. Uh, uh, that's David Tennant. Yeah, David Tennant. Yeah. That's going to be David Tennant. Which is awesome. Yep. Uh, Purple well, Man. Yeah, he was my favorite Doctor Who. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, number ten. Um, so this is yeah, this is a good time to be a geek. Now this, the Legends of Tomorrow is going to really, really tie into these CW shows, the right? Arrow and everything. That, and that's what I like. I mean, DC, like right. we were saying before, the DC TV properties seem to have gotten the the hint. That that's right. what the fans like. That's what the fans want. They want everything to tie together. Well, I think Marvel is having a tougher time with it too, just because you're trying to tie in a tell a weekly television show right. with your movies, which at first I thought was a really good idea, and now I see where that can get complicated and yeah. messy, especially since Joss Whedon said that like Agents of Shield isn't really canon with what's going on in the MCU. Like, Phil Coulson has to, like, remain dead in order for the Avengers to right. exist. So they'll never know that he's the one that's, like, you know, acting director or director or whatever he is of S.H.I.E.L.D. at this right. point. Which I think is insane. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, so this is the, that's a, a mess that they've created, which I think that they're going uh, to get out of. But, you know, back to these. Well, to yeah, these, I mean, they wouldn't do that without right. it. So Back to these, to yeah, these well, we'll new shows. Yeah, we'll get the S.H.I.E.L.D. in a little bit. Um, but The Legends of Tomorrow, produced by Greg Berlanti. And then also on CBS, also produced by Greg Berlanti. Yeah. Same person who's done Flash and Arrow is Supergirl. Yes. Now, no, I'm, it is tied into that universe because we talked about this last time. Yes. What are your now? They had a six-minute trailer. I posted six the trailer. Six minutes. I posted the trailer on, at xjockalbanyny.com. Yeah. yeah, it's like almost a quarter of an episode. Yeah, a quarter of an episode, quarter to a third of an episode. Yeah. So, what was your thoughts of the trailer? I want to get your thoughts uh, before I get mine. Well, I didn't hate it. Um, I thought at first they're well, they're setting it up the way that they've set up all of these. Uh, all of these kind of shows. Like, I thought it was the same way as The Flash, you know, young person out yep. in the world um, and all of a sudden, you know, gets the true calling type thing, you know, sh- you know, um, but I thought that I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good show. Um, I think that it's going to end up like making everybody more aware of Supergirl, who's kind of like a, you know, a side character in the comic right. books. But I, I think that this is their, this is their tie in to 
that Superman universe. Yes. You know, they can't have, they're not going to do a Superman show. They can't, you know, I don't think DC would allow them since they're pushing the movies. But I think that a Supergirl show that ties into this universe is kind of cool. But I did see, though, there are no plans for any immediate crossovers with any of these shows with Supergirl, which I understand because it's CBS. It's yeah. a different network. I know it's produced by the same company and the CW and CBS are uh, interlocked. You right. know what I mean? But um, at the same time, I think it would be much harder to do a crossover um, with those characters. So I think we'll see it eventually. But um, as of right now, I think Supergirl is going to be, I think it's going to be a fun show. Yeah, I like I like the um the trailer. Like I said in my article, I think this is I mean, based on the tone of the trailer, it's definitely geared towards, you know, girls, women. Definitely. But the guys can definitely, you know, can... Well, I like the evolution of her suit too. Yeah, you know what was, I mean? Yeah. I mean, you got the skimp you know, first you got the kind of like the skimpy midriff yeah, yeah. and all that, and she's like, I'm not wearing this. I feel like it's like a knock it's almost like a knock on like traditional Wonder Woman. I mean traditional yeah. Wonder Woman, I mean I mean, if you go back to the 1940s, you know, she's kind of got the skirt on and everything. But, right. like, Wonder Woman that we know and everything, it's, you know, yeah, she's, she's got not, the tights. She's not wearing a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, but there's a newer version now where where she's got, uh, you know, she doesn't have, like, the bikini tights. Yeah. She's got a regular... Pants. You know, she's got pants. She's why, got can't, leggings. why can't ladies wear pants? There's nothing wrong with leggings. <laughs> I mean, come on. You don't have to show so much skin on the female superheroes all the time. Well, and me, yeah, I know. I mean, they, they I, do a lot. I, I understand they're trying to cater to the guys, but honestly, right? Come on, right. you know, yoga pants. Give me a break. <laughs> so, yo, right, uh, right. So, uh, you know, let them wear yoga pants or something. It's not that bad, right? Um, but still, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It was, it was funny, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. This is probably going to be. I know it's geared towards, you know, the ladies, but I think this is probably going to be the guilty pleasure show for me. I think it's a really bold move by CBS. I think, I think right? so, too. Yeah, CBS taking that on. I mean... That's a strange show for them. They're like the... I mean, the only thing that I watch on CBS is Person of Interest. That's the only... I, well, they're on Big Bang Theory. I watch Big Bang, Person of Interest, um, and that's pretty much it on CBS. But, right. I mean, I would definitely, you know... I would watch Supergirl based on this trailer. No, oh, based yeah. on this trailer, absolutely. I think it's oh, going to yeah. be a fun yeah. show. And I they got and they, good. and they got uh, you know, and they got they, they got James Jimmy. You can't call him Jimmy. He likes right, James. Right. James Olsen. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously Superman exists. Because... They're, yeah, they're dropping Superman references. You kind of see a silhouette of him and everything. Yep. They know who he is and what he does, and now they're just discovering that oh, he also happens to have a cousin. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, but my my. The, the question still comes up. My question comes up. How does this tie into the cinematic universe? I don't think it does. It it yeah. I mean, it's it's basically this is where DC is shooting itself in the foot, right? Not giving it the continuity. Well, well you know, here's Supergirl, but we can't show you Superman or Batman. I think it's tough too, just because of the fact the way that they're going with the cinematic universe is right. so dark, and these shows and are light. And you know that's what I mean? What I'm talking. I mean, and the whole. I understand they want to try something different from what Marvel does, but still, I mean, you're just you're basically just banging the whole dark, yeah. dark, 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 dark thing. And at some point, it's <laughs> like, you know, so there needs to be some lightness in you, there. You gotta can't have just, something in there. It can't just be all doom and gloom. Yeah, you can't do that shit. It's that, right. that's not how it should work. Right. That's why I thought that you know at first I thought that they were maybe going a little bit too dark with Daredevil, but they had those moments of lightness where things yeah. weren't so crazy like where foggy you know saves uh oh crap what, what's her name now i can't remember her name now um you karen. Know, karen yeah yeah she's karen's coming out of the office and kingpin sends a couple guys to kind of shut her up because she's looking into stuff right and then fog you know and foggy shows up out of nowhere throws a baseball at one dude's head yeah and he's got the baseball bat and karen's like foggy Karen, Foggy, Karen. You know, that little light kind of moment where it's like, I can't believe I just did this. Right, right. You know, that kind of stuff. That's, I mean, that's how you should do it when you're doing the dark and gritty. But still, I mean, yeah, just. Well, because some of those characters exist in the dark and gritty world. I mean, right. Batman's always been more dark and gritty before they made him a little bit more cartoony and like, you know, the 60s and stuff with the comics code. But, right. um, you know, I, I think that too dark and gritty is going to end up, you know, it, it's going to end up like leaving some people on the sidelines. Right. And Superman, I mean, my thing for Superman was, and this is, this goes back to a friend of mine who is a big Superman fan. Mm -hmm. He always saw Superman as, you know, one of the, he was, 
He was very, you know, upright and 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 just the epitome of good. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you were looking at it in in uh, Dungeons and Dragons terms, he is lawful good. You know, if you've ever you, you don't play Dungeons and Dragons though, so you have I, zero I clue ha- what I'm talking. I have about. in the past. I, I don't probably not in a long time though. Right. But I have I have played in the past. But Superman would be definitely considered lawful good. Yeah. Um. I think Batman would well. Well, he operates outside of the lines of the traditional hero. Yeah. So maybe you know maybe neutral good. Uh, I I I I gotta have the chart in front of me to actually. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I mean, but still, it's just like, it, it, yeah, it's just way too much. And then the fact that they're, that they're not tying it in, you know, they're not taking the TV shows and tying it into the cinematic universe, right? You know, and then you're, you know, they're teasing you with Superman and Batman. You know, here's a silhouette of a dude with a cape. We don't know, yeah. it's you know, or like when they show like the paper in the Flash and it says like Queen Enterprises and uh, or Queen. Consolidated merges with Wayne Enterprises and yeah, stuff like some, that. You stuff know? like that. So they exist in these universes. I just don't right. know if we'll ever see them the way we want to see them. I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, but I think they should have something. Whether they, I mean, obviously, if they don't show Batman, maybe just have Bruce Wayne as a cameo, mm-hmm. something like that. You know, well, no, nope, something's going on, and there's, you know, but there's Bruce Wayne and and that kind of thing. Maybe, you know, maybe Batman leaves some stuff for Flash to clean up for him. You know, yeah, you know. I, you know, I took care of this problem, you know, here, you take care of this problem because I got to get back to, you know, right. I got to get back to Gotham. Exactly. That kind of stuff, you know? Or maybe we see an older Jim Gordon. I would just like to see them mention Gotham on one of these shows. I know. That would be awesome. I mean, you just know, make it, just, just guys, just make it. It's the, all, it's all Starling City, Central City, Coast, Coast City. City. Yeah. Like, you know, what about Metropolis and Gotham, though? Yeah. Or Bloodhaven. I mean, they have mentioned Blood. have they mentioned Bloodhaven? I feel like I they. I think they did. I feel like they. they it was very like slight, but they did right. mention Bloodhaven. You know, something's got to happen. I mean, have Barry go. You know, maybe there's a case going on that Barry. Ha- you know, next season or something where Barry has to go get information from Metropolis PD or something. And he goes to Metropolis. Yeah. Maybe he has a run in or something with Superman or, I I don't know. Or like something happens and he's like, "Do you guys need help?" And they're like, "No, we got it covered. You know, we yeah. got our guy. Something yeah. like that. Just something small." Yeah. But Just establish them. Let, let us know they're there. Establish him. Yeah. God. But I, I think it'll happen. All right. But, uh, all right. So anyway. But now uh, into the DC Cinematic Universe, there's some new, there's some new stuff that, uh, surrounding Batman versus Superman. Um, it's, it was, uh, I was confirmed by Umberto Gonzalez. He is, uh, he's, he's the editor and founder of HeroicHollywood.com. Right. And he announced um, on uh, Shanlin on Batman. It's a podcast that you can find. Um, he announced that Doomsday is actually going to play a pretty big role in Batman versus Superman. So there are there, now. I guess that there was rumors that Doomsday would be a part of it, right? Um, you know, right from uh, of, I guess since last year, somebody people have been uh, speculating that Doomsday was going to be part of Batman versus Superman. So we're getting a little bit more confirmation on that then? Yeah, well, one of the things that Umberto had said is that he's going to be kind of like the muscle. So I think he's going to be like Lex's muscle. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, Now, there's more rumor to this as well. And this is where it gets kind of, this is where it kind of gets cool. But it might it might make some fans go, huh? Um, now, apparently, Doomsday will be originated from the corpse of, of Michael Shannon's Zod. Um, I think what happened at the end is you have this Kryptonian body. Right. So you see, like, the, they did tease LexCorp a little bit in Man of Steel. Yeah. I think that LexCorp swoops in, takes it, starts experimenting. Now, if you're going with the Doomsday origin story from the comic books, um, he was he was Kryptonian. Yep. He was you know, exposed to prehistoric Krypton conditions over and over and over again and was made from science. Yes. So if they're going with that sort of baseline, then it's kind of the same. He's Kryptonian. Right. And he's created from science. Now, one of the things that Gonzalez also said is that you're going to love it because Doomsday looks incredible. It's going to be, you know, part mocap, part, you know, Michael Shannon. If they bring, if they're bringing Michael right. Shannon back, um, I think it would. I think it would work pretty well if that's the case. Because here's uh, 
Here's my other theory on this. Okay. We've been trying to figure out what the hell is even happening in Batman versus <laughs> Superman, right? It's like, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't know. I don't know anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that Lex Luthor is in it. Um, I know that Batman is in it, and I know that Superman is in it. That's it. <laughs> That's pretty much you all. Know. Oh, I'm, well, there's going to be a bunch of other heroes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm worried that this is going to be kind of like that first episode of Gotham, right. where it's like, here's everybody. Right, exactly. Look what we've got. But one, Well, one of the things to, that I thought about with this is the reason why Batman has is, is trying to fight or, you know, co- gets into conflict with Superman. Um, so say that there's something going on in the world. Um, you know, Lex Luthor has never been a fan of Superman per se. They started right. out as friends as kids, but they've always been enemies. Right. Um, now, what if he does create this Doomsday guy? Well, you know, what What if, you know, this incarnation of Doomsday is going around doing things and it's leaving traces behind that would suggest that it was someone from Krypton doing it? Okay. That would set Superman up as the Patsy. Yeah. And so okay. now the world turns on Superman because of all this bad stuff that's happening because somebody from Krypton, this is definitely Kryptonian. Like, how do we right. trust this guy when all this is happening? That's where Batman gets involved. And I think that they end up discovering that Doomsday is there. Now, I mean, if it's Doomsday from the comics, I mean, Doomsday kills Superman. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, will, will, does this mean. Henry Cavill will die. I doubt it. And um, then comes back. Yeah, I mean, I totally I, I, that could be because that's what happens in the comics. But um, man, I I feel like that would be a really cool way to set it up. It would make more sense to me right. why Batman would then be going after Superman if he sees him as a threat like that. That that would make more sense, right? Like, yeah. doesn't that make sense? So Lex takes him. He he takes the body of General Zod and he experiments on it and does things to it. And turns him into Doomsday. So it's 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 Zod, but it's not Zod. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's the only way that you can really explore that option too, because I mean, other than that, I mean, there's nothing left of Krypton, and yeah. you know, establishing that Doomsday character outside of that option, I think, would be really really hard. Um, I was surprised to hear that they were going to be including it, because now when you think about the villains in Batman and Superman, we have confirmed that Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. Yep. There are also rumors that there's going to be a small cameo, possibly in a flashback, of Jared Leto as the Joker, because they're setting that up with Suicide Squad. And if that's a flashback scene, I can see that, and I'm okay with it. Right. Um, and now you have the rumor that Doomsday is in it, and he plays a pretty pivotal role. And I think that's why my theory about him doing things to you know, frame Superman, I think it makes sense. Okay. So if that does happen, then that's what happens. But man, I I totally get it. Because, I mean, obviously Marvel took liberties with the origin of Ultron and the Vision. Yeah. You know, to make it work for them. I think this makes it work for for DC. Right. You know, and I think it makes it work too because, yes, Lex Luthor is a big villain, but man, I just never really saw him, unless he's wearing that exoskeleton, never really saw him as much of a threat he always needed someone else to do the work well, for him. I mean that, you know? Well, I mean, in comics, there were always those two different kinds of, of villains. You had right. the cerebral villain, and you had the brawny villain. And Lex was always yeah. the cerebral villain until he got his exosuit. And then he became kind of a mix. But I always thought I always looked at him more as the, the cerebral kind of villain. He, I always thought he made a terrible, you know, a thug or anything like that. I mean, yeah. it, it just... It, it didn't work. I don't know why they even gave him the freaking exo suit. I just, know. You know, just let Lex be Lex. I think let him be the let him be the brains. Yeah, let him be the brains. Let him manipu- manipulate people and just kind of move the chess pieces around the board. Yeah. And just you know, it's a battle of wits between Superman and Lex, but Lex is obviously playing with way more strategy than what mm-hmm. you know than what Superman can see coming on now if this if so they introduce doomsday and he is this huge problem right and he does and he is the one doing terrible things to frame superman to make people mistrust him right everything like that that makes sense to me then that you have to introduce all these other heroes because doomsday cannot just be taken down right you know what i mean especially you know i love batman batman can't do nothing to doomsday right (laughs) you know what i mean like, so, I mean, they're going to need help. So then you enter Wonder Woman and Aquaman right. and The Flash right. and all these people, Dawn of Justice, 
have to converge to help take down this villain. See, this is right. Yeah, this is starting to make sense now. If it go, I mean, and this is just this is just this my is just theory. speculation. Right, I'm, I'm liking your theory. I think your theory's got a lot of teeth to it. Um, and I mean, th you know, based on this theory, right. And I know I could be setting myself up for a big letdown if they don't do this, but you know, based on this theory, this is something I would definitely be really hyped to see. Right. I'm still kind of, you know, with the whole dark and gritty part, but I can understand why you're still doing the dark and gritty because this is Doomsday. This is a guy who killed Superman. I mean, yeah, this is the badass of badasses. Right. So, well, and it goes back to the whole thing of why, why you see in the trailer, why Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne is angry. Like, yes. Furious, angry. Right. Okay. Because there was a rumor early on with this movie that something happens where Superman is to blame for the death of somebody very important. And a lot of people speculated that it might be the president of the United States and everything. And then it got more and more to where people were like, it's probably going to be the death of somebody like Commissioner Gordon, because that's somebody that Batman is very close to. Right. But it's not Superman who does it. If my theory works out and it's Doomsday who does it, laser vision. Yeah. Everybody knows that Superman's got it with yeah. the whole, with, with everything that happened at the end of Man of Steel. Everybody yep. knows. Everybody knows it. The word right? is out. Yeah. So, I mean, they know that that is there. And he and he does that to somebody like Commissioner Gordon. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Batman is going to be pissed. And then oh, he puts yeah. on the Bat super suit and he yep. goes and he he's going to fight him. That's, yeah, I, I, and I, I like this. I mean, this is. Now I'm starting. This is the, actually the first time I'm starting to feel something for the Batman Superman and, uh, movie. Yeah, but and if it doesn't go but the way that, but if it's not, but right. if it's not true, if we're all, if we're just kind of like you know having yeah. a, a nerd a nerd fap session, <laughs> this is gonna be like you know total but, letdown. I mean, it makes sense if that's the way they're gonna do it, and that's something I'm really interested to see play out. Right. So I don't I don't know this I I but I'm kind of I'm kind of hyped about it. Now, I am too. Based on this, this I'm, is kind of getting me. You know, this is kind of getting me more and more. CDC, it's not that hard if you actually just let out a little bit more information based on what, you know. Well, I mean, geez, we still have a year until we see this movie. Anyway. I know, but still, a I mean, year. they should they should be putting, you know, a little something out. They should be feeding right. a few tidbits. I think we'll see a little bit more from the set um, as summer goes on. Right. And they're trying to create a little bit more hype. And then it's going to be quiet for the fall. And right. then I think once you get to around December. Right. I think we're going to get a full on trailer rather than just a little you know teaser one that we've seen right and i think that will reveal more i think we'll see jesse eisenberg yeah i think we'll see lois you know i think we might see jeremy irons as alfred so um i i don't know if it works out this way because god doomsday is one of my favorite villains yeah i mean it's just so i awesome. still have a copy of I got. I think it's over here. Somewhere. You have the Death of Superman. I got the Death of Superman. I think right over here somewhere next okay. to my my Spider Man novel. So nice. I got. I I know I got it around here somewhere. So. Great. That's a great, great, great issue. It was. Yeah. It so. was awesome. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm a little hyped on this now. If it is, if it works if, out if the way we works, want it to work, yeah, that would be fantastic. So so keep checking back with, you know, I think this is something we'll probably be watching. We'll be posting about it on xjockalbanyny dot com. Yeah. And be listening to the you know to Geek Show here. Uh, well, because we'll definitely cover more as we get closer to uh, to the Batman Superman movie. Right. Um, one other thing that we didn't have on the that we didn't have on the prep that I wanted to cover too, all those pictures from the set of Suicide Squad that have been coming out. Yeah, yeah. They recently started production of the movie, mm -hmm. and now they've got pictures of Will Smith. Right. And um, uh, Margot, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, Deadshot. Um, yep. You know, they've got some shots of Killer Croc. Yep. Um, I mean, just the whole... And they're all over the place. We'd post them, but I don't, I don't know who who's in charge of these photos, and I don't want to get in yeah, trouble for posting Yeah, they're all over things. the place. They're they are. all over the place. So. But I think, like, you know, from what I'm seeing, it, it looks like they're okay as far as the characters go. Like, at first I thought that Will Smith looked a little bit... You know, is Suicide Squad taking place in the seventies with his one right. outfit that he had on? Yeah. But when I saw him in the Deadshot uniform, I was like, okay. I was like, Will Smith looks yeah. pretty damn cool as Deadshot right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then um, there was also uh, somebody had posted a Vine video yeah. of Margot Robbie, or you could just he barely hear Margot Robbie yep. sp talking as Harley. And They're she saying, has to have that signature voice. So. Yeah, I mean, she's got to have that. You know, she's got to have Tara Strong's high pitched voice. Yeah. To do that so um we'll we'll see how that goes i mean you can't hear it very well in the video right you know it's very you know all you hear is 
like, well, well, you know, was that her? I can't tell. <laughs> but still, um, I mean, yeah, the 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 pictures look kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I'm still kind of wondering how the Joker fits into it. Maybe it's a flashback. I'm telling you, I'm it's got to be a flashback. I'm telling you, they're after the Joker. In they're at, you think they're after? I think that he's the person there. I think he's so out of control, and I think that they need the super villains to go get him. That's 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 what I'm thinking. And I want I wonder also how... for anybody who has seen the photos of Jared Leto as the Joker, the first one they teased out with all the tattoos. Um, I have also read he is not going to have those tattoos right. in the movie. Um, it was just like a publicity photo and everything. So chill. Yeah, the backlash was like, wow, did the people hate that? I mean, sh- I mean, I didn't love it, obviously, but I didn't yeah. hate it. Oh man, they I were, mean, wow, the backlash. They on were that, all man. over it, man. That now, was pure hate. Now, speaking of the Joker, I read the other day that um, he's taking a page out of Heath Ledger's book, and even when he's not filming, he's trying to stay the, in, in the, character. Oh wow. So I mean. All right. Well, this is good luck to Jared Leto's friends and family because I wouldn't <laughs> want to have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how do how do the people at craft services feel hey, when he walks hey, up to J- get lunch? Jared, would you like some macaroni and cheese? <laughs> I love some. <laughs> <laughs> then he was... shoots him with a gun and a like a, a well, just well, a bang flag comes yeah. out. <laughs> oh wow, that would be kind of weird. If anybody. If if you're listening to this and you're anywhere near where they're filming that, yeah, please let get, us know. Yeah, let us know how that works. I don't want to see Jared Leto on set. I want to see him offset. I want to see him offset. Yeah, trying to be the Joker still. Yeah, you we want to see how that works. He's out. like going around to like parties and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, Jared, nice to meet you." And he's you know handing Joker, out yeah, yeah. I want a banana. <laughs> and he's just like, and he's handing out like Joker cards yeah. instead of his own business cards or something like that. And it's like, oh, don't mind him. He's just trying to stay. Yeah, he's just yeah. His method actors are crazy, man. Yeah. They yeah. are crazy, but I mean, they, I mean, look at Heath Ledger. They gave one of the yeah best and he, performances. And he killed himself. Unfortunately, so. yeah. Hopefully, Jared Leto. Oh, yeah. stays a there, little bit less there crazy is help. than that. Jared, don't don't fall. Think too Heath deep. Ledger got in a character for Brokeback Mountain? I don't know. <laughs> Him and I'm Jake not, Gyllenhaal. I'm didn't not going to speculate on that. We're method that's, actors. That's not my. Position. Leave us alone. I I, I don't judge because right. I'm already screwed up enough as it is. Um, we're at, well, we're right at about an hour. Do you think we should, we should shelf talking about shield for our next episode? Maybe. I mean, I mean, cause we, we I think al- we always do a ton of Marvel stuff and we right. haven't given, we haven't really shown the DC guys, but then again, we haven't really had a lot of DC stuff to, no, to share. No, we haven't. So it was kind of like, you know, I guess we just kind of busted one out and, you know, I think so. But, I th- yeah. Let's, let's, let's go ahead. We'll shelf shield. We'll sh- for, yeah, for the next episode. Um, yeah, because there's a lot we could talk about. Yeah, when but, it comes to that. But so so we'll, we'll we'll do that. And but you know the last thing that we had on the list, it's just a little it's just a little kicker. Just some at, fluff for you. Yeah, we call it kickers in uh, in the broadcast biz. <laughs> it's just funny little stories, that kind of thing. But Daniel Craig, yep. recently was outed as being in the new Star Wars movie as a stormtrooper. And he will be uncredited. He's not even playing anyone significant. Yes. He's just as... For Daniel Craig, badass James Bond. Yes. He's just as big a dork as all of us. Yep, he's a big Wha- geek. He wanted to be in Star Wars. Yeah, and a lot of people have done that. I mean, you had like... Who was it that, who was, it that was in uh, Attack of the Clones? Was it Backstreet Boys? I can't remember. Or, no. Uh, I don't know. Uh, was it, Or New Kids on the Block or somebody. There was some boy band. Yeah, that ended up being in uh, Attack of the Clones in the Geonosis fight. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I can't remember. Interesting. Yeah. I'll show you the scene. I'll send you the scene. But still. Um. So yeah. So uh, Daniel Craig has been out. I hope as, it was O Town. As, <laughs> as he's he's a stormtrooper somewhere. We don't know who. So now everybody's going to be kind of guessing. Mm-hmm. But you know, and Kim was asking me about. It. I asked her if she heard that story. She was like. Yeah, but why would he do that? It's like, so he can say he was in Star right, Wars. Right, because he's a big fanboy. Yeah, he could be sitting there with all his friends, right? You know, and say, "Yep, yeah, that's me right there." Because Daniel Craig grew up loving Star Wars yes. just as much as we did. Yep, that's... he's a big, big a geek as us, and he can thank his friend Simon Pegg for letting that one slip. Everybody is fi- Simon Pegg friends with everyone. I don't know. I, I mean, feel like he he is friends with any British actor under the sun. He's, but I mean, he's such a cool guy, and he's just as big a dork. Him and him and uh, uh, Nick um, uh, Nick Frost okay. are, are just as big a geeks as we are. Oh, absolutely. You know, they're, they're... Is Simon Pegg going to be in these Star Wars movies? There was talk that he was going to have a little a little cameo or something in it. 
I'm hoping that it's not, you know, anything too campy. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that it's, you know, kind of within the, within the feel of the movie, within the genre of the movie. So, okay. I mean, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm welcome to anybody that they feel fit putting in as a cameo, as long as it's not one of those over the top, like Seth Rogen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would be cool if he's in there, but the second he opens his mouth and acts like he did, Seth, Seth Rogen sitting back, uh, smoking a fat yeah. doobie with Chewbacca. <laughs> that at that point, I would freaking take a freaking Louisville Slugger to his nuts repeatedly. <laughs> the Wookie Express. Yes, <laughs> the Wookie <laughs> Express. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You be careful. Uh, with the cameos. I hope that uh, no, you, know, you hear man, that. You can't have it. You hear that noise, and and then you hear like a sound of someone hitting a bong or something like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> wrong. That's just wrong. Yeah, you have to be careful with those cameos because yeah, they're fun for the actor and everything, but they wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily make sense. Now with Simon Pegg, wouldn't it be funny if he's there and he's just like somebody in passing or whatever? Yeah, and Han Solo walks by and he's just like, hey shoot first or something like that like wouldn't that be funny something weird yeah you know what i mean and he just goes and they put it all to bed and he says yeah or something like that Uh, or he just goes what do you think (laughs) something like that you know what i mean it's got to they got to do it slyly so it doesn't kind of take you out of the the suspension of disbelief right if they if they do something like that it's going to be like i'm going to i'm going to Oh, I'm going to be pissed. Right, right. So I'm very touchy about that. Listen, so. I love him in the new Star Trek movies, so yeah, if they want to put him in the... He's awesome as Scotty. I yeah. love him. I think he's great. So if he... And, you know, and he is a big... He is a big geek like us. He is. He's right. very big. So if he's in there, I'm cool with it. Yep. All right. So um, there was one other thing I was going to mention, but now I can't think of it. So, you know what? Save it for the next episode. All right. Screw it. It's not that big a deal. All right. Sorry we didn't get to shield everyone, but we spent a lot of time yeah. on DC this this particular episode. Yeah, the D- yeah, so DC fans, you know, you know, if we haven't alienated you, thank you for listening because yep. we do like a lot of the DC stuff. It's just, you know, yeah. you know, well, I, you can be a bigger hater than I can though. Yes, <laughs> I can be because I'm I'm very I'm very passionate about this stuff. Yeah. I'm super passionate. Yeah. So but uh, you know, if let us know what you think of our ideas, our, our theories, and that. Go to xjockalbanyny.com. dot uh, com. Fill us in on on your thoughts. Even share your theories. Maybe you've got something that we haven't even thought about. We'd love to hear it. We may even mention it. Mm-hmm. You can email us bj at xjockalbanyny.com, dot com. Big Rich at xjockalbanyny.com. dot com. And of course, uh, please show us some love on iTunes and on Stitcher, and let us know what you think about the show overall. Because we'd love do. to hear that. Um, you know, and. You know, next week. Um, well, you know, I got the baby on the way, so I don't know. If we're getting, oh yeah, we're getting close. The twentieth, we'll, we'll have to figure it out. May twentieth is the due date. Okay. So, but usually they say the first ones are late. So we'll know. We may, <laughs> we may have an episode next week. We may not. We're all not right. sure. But keep watching the website xjockalbanyny.com. Till then, stay geeky. All right.